Okay, guys. <sighs> so we are going to be reading Ever After High, Fairy's Got Talent. And, um, hold on one second. I'm trying to figure out what part we're on. So we are on part eight. So, on page 78 and 79. And here we go. Chapter 8. An Abundance of Blue. Apparently, Pharaoh Good Fairy had so many wingless fairy friends, she's gotten used to walking. There were times when it was necessary for all fairies to walk, when the doors was too narrow, the ceilings too high, or the hall too crowded. But Fabelle didn't care if her wings knocked a few students off their feet. She also made a point of flying whenever she could. Everyone could, everyone should make room for her. Hi, Farah. Hi, Cedar. How's it going, Farah? Hi, Melody. How's it going? It's going great. Farah waved by passerby as if she were in the pageant. She greeted this student and that student. They wished her happiness and health. Um, peasantries were exchanged. She smiled. They smiled. She laughed. They laughed. It was some kind of mutual appreciation festival. Even her mouse squeaked his greetings. Fabel, however, excluded the opposite reaction. Most of the students glanced warily at her, darted aside, and avoided her wings. Well, I'm clearly not going to win a poverty contest, she realized. Normally, Fabel wouldn't give a twinkle about a good fairy's social status, but the undeniable truth that Pharaoh was beloved could hurt Fabel's chance to being cast as a wicked fairy queen. Even though Justine had said she'd full hold a fair auction, she definitely want the performance to be sold out. Farah, with all her friends, would most likely draw on a huge crowd. That fact alone could sway Justine's decision. Fabel's eyes narrowed as she thought about this. Another reason to spy on Farah and her crush chances. Farah's good fairy's room was tidy and quillant. No carrot tops littered the floor. No turnips or any other stupid root vegetable. She'd made a decorating choice that would be considering trendy or bold, which surprised Fabel. She should have thought a fairy who focused on appearance so much would have a much louder room. But the simple decorer sort of fit with Fabel's personality, sweet and friendly. There was a canopied bed Lots of soft pillows and a the paint bedspreaded pillows and wallpapers palettes were all various of one color. What's the deal with you? The color blue, Fabel asked. It's my favorite color, Farah said. This she pointed to her chair. Can you blame me? Blue is with me all the time. I'm so lucky. Plus my roommate, Michelle, also loves blue. She says it reminds her of the ocean. Of course the mermaid would be light blue, Fabel thought. She didn't admit that all the blue hues actually made her feel relaxed. It, if she had this room, she'd nap all day. Which would be fine if she were Barar Beauty. But not fine for a fairy who had, was trying to become the wickedest, villainous, darkest fairy ever after. Fabel sniffled and yawn, a yawn, and her gaze traveled across the vast corkboard. Unlike her own room, there was no family crest with a moto Doris of dark magic. Instead, Farah had covered a chalk corkboard with photos of friends. There she was, smiling with Apple White, taking a selfie with Ashley and Ella, and posing with Blondie. And there was... With Justine, a party with Fabel hadn't been invited to since she was a daughter of the Dark Fairy, who never got invited to anything. In another photo of her, 
and Justine and the Hocus Latte Cafe. You and Justine are friends, Fabel hissed. Sure, I'm friends with most e most everyone, Farah said simply. Fabel spun around and glared at her competition. Or, or, oh, isn't that a delightful coincidence, she said. Her voice dripped with instation. You're auditioning for a play, and you just happen to be friends with the director. That won't matter, Farah said. Her cheeks redden. Justine will cho choose based on talent. Uh-huh. You expect me to believe that, Farah Bell? Pointed to the other photo and another. You two apparently go to a lot of parties together. Did you see me at any of those parties? The ensuing silence was a thick of castor castellera portage. Fira opened her mouth, then closed it. She clearly didn't know what to say. How could she admit that she'd gone to all of those parties without hurting Fabel's feelings? She was momentarily paralyzed by her niceness. How pitiful. Just so you know, I don't get invited to parties because I'm cursed. It's not because people dislike me. I'm sure it's not, Farah said politely. The curse makes them forget to invite me. That's how it works. It's the same curse my mom has. That's why she ha wasn't invited to the celebration of Sleeping Beauty's birth. Got it? Okay, Farah nodded, as she understood. I'm sorry you have that curse. They stared at each other in a realization that Farah felt sorry for her only made Fabel more upset. Spindle woke up from his nap and started yapping. Fabel placed the pet carrier into the carpet, then set Spindle free. The puppy leaped out immediately, pounced on the sock, chewing its bus bits. Don't worry about the sock, Farah said. I can fix it later. Who said I was worried, Fabel darted over to Farah's desk. It was a pile of high and books, utterly boring titles like one and one things you can do with the pumpkin, how to turn a mouse into a house, and other affordable decorative tips. <coughs> Sorry, guys. With the rags of the rich, how to make her look like a princess, Fabel picked up a book with the well-worn cover. And read the title. Does everything have to end at midnight? Why are you reading this? As Farah set her mouse into a little mouse castle, she explained. All fairies' godmothers would like their spells to last longer, but we have to accept the midnight decree. Whenever I start to question this rule, I read this book and it reminds me that midnight is part of my story and I should be grateful that I'm given the opportunity to help others. Even if it's only temporary. Why don't you try to change the rule? Change it. Sure. Fabel lowered her voice and whispered in the obnoxious way with dark magic. Oh, no, I would never do that, Farah. Gaze darted around. It looks like she wanted to run from the room. To run from the words themselves. Dark magic. A good fairy should even think about dark magic. You know that? A knock at the door broke. The tense, Farah. Apple White entered the room. Oh, hello, Fabel. How fairy, fairy, odd to see you here. She walked up to Farah and stuck out her right leg. I'm going to dinner tonight. And daring, darling, and Dexter. And my thigh have to run. I called my dwarf network, but they can't get me a new pair until tomorrow. I'd be royal grateful if you'd... Of course, Farah flickered her wand. A few musical notes and some fairy dust drifted through the air and voila the tights were good as new thank you apple squealed with delight i wish my story had a fairy godmother you're the best i owe you one she hugged farah fabel rolled her eyes why is such happiness it just a pair of tights it's not as farah had made any last impact impact on the world Fabel told herself that the only reason Apple was fond of Farah was because of the fairy's ability to mend tights to do any mental things like that. But deep down, Fairy Bell knew better. Apple, like most of the students at Ever After High, truly liked Farah because Farah was nice. 
She cared, she helped, and if Fabel hadn't been so overscheduled on a villain tractory, she might have taken some time to hang out with Farah. Oh my god, mother, I'm starting to like her too. Fabel pushed the crazy thoughts f from her head. Don't you get tired of helping everyone, she asked, after Apple had left the room. Well, sometimes it's a bit tiring, I admit that. Pharaoh sat on her bed and slipped off her blue shoes. But it's my duty, my destiny to help others. You know, I think that's why I'd like to be in this play. I'm always behind the scenes. I'm always the supporting role. It would be fun to be a star of the show just one time to be important. Behind the scenes, Fabos tried to remember the details of Pharaoh's story. You turn mice into horses a rat into a coachman, and a pumpkin into a couch. That's very important. She couldn't hide her sarcasm, as she didn't try. Farrah frowned. I know you don't think my magic is significant, not compared with the, the kind of power you'll have, but sometimes being able to change the way something looks does more than simple change the surface. It's not just about making Apple look good. If she feels good, she has confidence. Then she feels empowered. That kind of attitude can change somebody's destiny. Fabel leaned against the desk and folded her arms. Changing somebody's destiny to talk into Rebel? I'm not. Farah straightened her back and held her head up. Hi. It's my duty to serve others. That's what I do. I'm proud to serve. And it's my duty to serve no one. But enough with the boring chit-chat. So, what about your monologue? Oh, right, the monologue. Farah smiled. She hurried to her desk and grabbed the book. I'm almost, I am almost forgot. Have you read the Shannon Pales version of the Sleeping Beauty story? Fabelle shook her head. Well, it's very important, especially the scene where the dark fairy bursts into the castle and confronts the king and queen. I chose that speech. Fabel clenched her jaw. Farah Goodfairy was about to perform a part of the story that belongs to Fabel's mother. Sure, it's a fictional version written by the best-selling author, but it annoyed her to the core. Go ahead, Fabel said. She slowly sat on the edge of the desk. Amaze me. It would be, of course, the Distratus Formans. Farah had no instinct for a villainy. Farrah cleared her throat with a book in one hand. She unflittered her wings and lifted herself above the bed. Your Majesty, she said, not in a sweet voice, but in one of the demanding attention. Forgive my intrusion, but I could help noticing that you are in the middle of the party. Did you forget to mail my invitation? Perhaps it was lost. Ma her brow feared and her voice rose and nearly thundered levels. Surely... She wouldn't purposefully leave me off the guest list. You wouldn't dare. Spindle stopped chewing on the sock and dove into the pillow. Fabel could barely hide her surprise. The little good fairy is delivering a monologue like the pro. How had she conquered the power voice and authorized stance of determination? One might think she'd be studying a year of professional acting academy. If she was this good... In addition, there wouldn't be a standing ovation for sure. Any notion of liking and spending time with this good fairy disinterrogated. This was competition, and there could be only one winner. Somehow, some way, Fabel had to stop Farah from auditioning. Gotta go, Fabel announced, interrupting the Stellar's performance, but. It's getting late. I have way too much to do. She tossed the bellow aside, scooted Spindle into her arms, then set him back into the carrier. Farrah gently landed on the carpet with what about your monologue? You haven't found one yet? You are, I already found one. I'm going to do the same monologue as you. Fabel grabbed the book from Farrah's hands and took a picture of the page with her mirror photo. But instead of acting concerned or accusing Fabel, of copying? Fiera just smiled. Oh, that's an excellent idea, she said. I think it'll be fun if we both do the same monologue. 
Of course she thought it would be fun, Fabel thought. She didn't have a competent bone in her body, which is why she is doomed to lose. See, you on audition, Vera called to Fabel, hurried down the hall. I hope that I helped you. Oh, you have no idea how much you've helped, Fabel thought. And that is the end of part eight.